Batman! Yeah, that's right. I'm going to be painting a Batman figure for you this week. He is by Night Models, and he's actually a rather large. He is officially 35 millimeters, which is, of course, a lot bigger than what I generally paint. And I know a lot of you have actually been asking about painting larger scales. And yeah, I know it's not 54 millimeter yet, but we'll get there. But it's certainly true that when you're talking about uh, sort of bigger scales, it may not seem like a whole bunch, you know, the difference between 28 and 35, but it does tend to really have a huge effect on the detail level that you get in the models, and that's what you're hopefully going to be seeing in a moment. Also, this tutorial, of course, is going to feature a lot of black painting, which is something I have covered before in other videos and sort of varying levels of detail, but it's been quite a while, I think, since I did sort of a tutorial exclusively focused on the color. I think, in fact, it was probably either my first or second video that I ever made, so I think we're well overdue for an update on that topic. Okay, to start off with, here are all the paints that you will need for Batman. You can see it's actually not very much at all. This does not include the colors I used for his face, what little of it shows, and I also didn't include all the paints that I used in the groundwork, but you can figure that out yourself. Please note that glaze medium on the sort of right-hand side of the row of paints, it's really, really important for what we're going to be doing. Now obviously I applied a black surface primer to Batman already, but I am now going to go over him with just plain Vallejo black. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because the surface primer dries a little bit sat and it's not as matte as I was like, and normal black is really, really, really matte. So I'm just kind of going to slop on this extra layer. And if you don't get perfect coverage, it's not too big a deal because there is that black undercoat and it's not going to show at all. Now, obviously, as you might expect, when we're painting a black model like this, subtlety is going to be the name of the game. So the first layer that I'm applying here is a mixture of black and Vallejo German Gray. Um, I'm just going to start pretty much applying this to everywhere that's really not a, a deep, deep shadow on the figure. And for the moment, we're mostly going to be concerning ourselves with his cloak and cowl. Um, because he's wearing at least this version of Batman. This is sort of the movie Batman, I think, the most recent movie Batman, that is. He's wearing sort of a body armor, and I'm going to be painting that in a more gray tone. So we can kind of ignore a lot of that for the moment and just focus on, you know, highlighting all the folds and creases in the cloak. For my next layer, I'm just going to move up to straight German gray, and I'm going to be doing just what I did. Uh, I'm continuing to bring out the sort of higher areas, the folds where they sort of are raised and you know, ignore sort of down in the folds and creases. Um, I'm going to be doing some blending here, but I'm not going to be worrying about it quite as much as you might expect given that we're A, painting a cloak and B, that it's a really big figure where you're going to need to do a lot of blending. We're going to worry about that later. Uh, more so you know for, for the moment you really just want to start kind of building up kind of blocking out those areas of color where you want it to be lighter and where you want it to be darker I'm then going to start gradually lightening by mixing um, some Vallejo neutral gray into my German gray. The other thing that I'm doing sort of as I work is I've got some Vallejo flat red. You probably saw that in the opening shot. And I'm adding just a drop of it sort of to each layer that I put on. And that's just so that I can give that gray a slightly reddish warm tone. It's real, real subtle. Uh, if you're putting in so much that you're turning your paint pink, then you have done something wrong. It's just enough to sort of, you know, I don't know, give that gray a warm tone. Uh, you could choose another color too. You could go for um, purple or blue and give your gray sort of a different shade, but it's really up to you. Um, so this layer here that has some neutral gray in it 
is again just being used to further define the wrinkles and creases on the cape. And again, you can see I'm still not worrying too heavily about blending the paint together. At this stage I've got even more neutral gray in my mix and I'm really just starting to focus on sort of the sharpest creases and folds areas where a lot of light is going to be hitting. And I mean it may seem like you know this is going to make everything really really gray looking and I mean it does to an extent but we're going to tone a lot of this down in a moment and it's important with something like this even though you want it to be black you kind of need that high contrast in there you need to have or at least some contrast between uh the black and another shade because that's you know that's how you make it stand out and give it dimension if you know if we just left it with really 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 dark paint and there wasn't enough contrast then you know it would just look funny so i'm really sort of emphasizing the highlights now and really areas where i know a lot of light would be hitting uh the model Now I'm applying one final sort of high highlight with neutral gray and German gray mixed together. Um, in, as far as how light you should let the mix go, you don't want to get anywhere really close to pure neutral gray. Uh, you want to always make sure that there's plenty of the German gray in there because it'll just be it'll just be too gray if you go to the, sort of the higher end of things. I mean there are some areas where you can be a little more extreme like obviously around his face uh, where you want to put some extra emphasis and some you know really areas where you really think light's going to be hitting but you want to be really careful here. I'm using this color almost as an edge highlight for the most part so you can see it really goes on sort of the sharp folds and a lot of these steps that I've made so far have been very, very gradual. I'm only lightening each step very slightly. Um, and I'd say the less comfortable you are with painting something like this, the more sort of gradual steps you should make because it'll be uh, easier for you. You're less likely to mess everything up if you, you do that. And it may take a little bit longer, but it's just like a safer approach. If you're more confident, then you can... Uh, make some slightly bigger steps, but you know after you've done this a little bit you'll get it kind of more comfortable You'll get a sense of just like how much you can lighten each layer of paint and still be able to control the results Now up until this point we've applied sort of highlights to this model But we haven't really spent a lot of time worrying about blending them together And so that's what I'm going to be doing now. Uh, there's various ways to achieve a smooth blend on a model, you can you know you can you can layer uh, the paint very very slowly and gradually and get a nice result, but that's awfully awfully time consuming. Um, another way is you can just kind of apply all the layers you want, sort of more starkly, like we did here, and then once they're on there, you can kind of blend them together afterwards, and that's basically what we're doing. Uh, I'm doing, I'm, but I'm using uh, something called a glaze here in order to do that. It's not something I've talked about a lot before. It's particularly useful on these larger figures like this. We're getting a really smooth, even blend is extremely important because you're really, really going to see it. Uh, and glazes are a type of paint that you can get sort of as is, like uh, Citadel, Vallejo, they sell them. And it's basically a colored paint that's very, very thin and very, very, very transparent. So you can apply it to a model and it'll sort of tint the overall under co underlaying colors, but it won't necessarily darken them, which is something that, say, a wash does. A wash definitely tints the area, but it also darkens it. A glaze doesn't have to do that. And it also goes on very smoothly and evenly like a paint. That's unlike a wash. You put a wash and it tends to pool and run and you can't really apply it evenly. You can apply a glaze just like a normal paint and, get, and expect sort of a smooth coverage. And so I didn't obviously buy a specific glaze here. I'm using that bottle of what you saw in the beginning, that glaze medium from Vallejo. And it lets you make your own glaze out of any color you want, which gives you a huge amount of control. So I took the glaze medium and basically mixed some black paint into it. And that just made the black very, very transparent and thin. So what I can do now 
is start out kind of applying it down in the deep recesses and gradually layering it on and sort of building it up. And as I do that, I can sort of achieve a smoother transition between those dark, dark shadows and those very light uh, highlights because one layer of glaze will very subtly uh, darken the model, but it's, it's such a slight amount that you get a huge kind of amount of control over the results, I guess, if that makes sense. But it has the advantage, too, that you're not, like, if we were to just do this by building up hundreds and hundreds of layers of color, you're not having to mix zillions of different paints and gradually build them up. Instead, you're sort of just using one sort of type of paint to just unify what's already there. So, you know, basically slightly darkening down the areas uh, between where you've got those really light highlights and those dark shadows so that they all just kind of very smoothly blend together with one another. So you should be able to see that already sort of the transitions now between the really dark areas in the model and the light areas in the model are much more subtle and much more smooth looking. You can see there's a little bit of shininess in some areas and that's just because the glaze hasn't dried. It, it tends to take a long time to dry and um, that's not anything you have to worry about. It's just what you get when you take a lot of that medium. It's just very, very slow drying, which is actually an advantage when you're painting because you probably don't have to worry about it going all you know hard on your palette while you're working besides making a dark glaze you can also use a light paint to make a glaze like i did here so i made sort of my german gray light neutral gray mix into a glaze made it really transparent and that's another way that you can kind of blend other colors tie them together but i would caution that this is a harder thing to do because the light colored paint tends to get very uneven in terms of the coverage it provides over a darker base so you're going to have a harder time getting a smooth nice even result as opposed to trying to put a say a dark glaze over a light surface so i mean i don't think this is even necessary i tried it and it, it, it did look nice but i don't think you know i could have gotten by without doing this so it, it is definitely like a tool in your arsenal uh making light glazes is a way of blending but i would say Mostly, if you're blending colors together, it's probably going to be easier and faster to use uh, a dark glaze rather than a light glaze for that purpose. I kind of continued playing with the glazes for a while until I got a really good result. It's not sort of a foolproof thing it's kind of like you have to do it to taste you kind of can keep almost endlessly fiddling with it to get a look that you like and just get a nice smooth even effect uh, eventually I just kind of stopped and decided to move on and I wanted to finish with one extreme really high edge highlight in some areas which I again made by taking the neutral gray and just darken it ever so slightly. It's almost actually pure neutral gray at this stage, and I've got it real thin, and I'm using it basically along some very sharp edges and creases and folds and stuff. So it really shouldn't interfere with any of the glaze work that I did earlier because I'm not applying it really to areas where there's that really um, sort of a transition going on. It's just, it's really just to make those really sort of extreme dramatic folds in the cloak pop out a little bit more and just, you know, be a little bit more dynamic looking.
you know, this particular Batman is wearing kind of body armor, and I decided to paint it uh, in a lighter grayer tone than the cape. It's just the base is going to be a lighter color. So I've taken here, um, again, that sort of mixture of um, neutral gray and German gray, sort of the brightest uh, variant of it, and use that as the base for the armor plates. And one difference, though, is I haven't mixed any sort of red into this, so it won't have that red tone that uh, the cloak had. And so at this point, I'm really just carefully base coating, kind of p very carefully picking out those armored plates. Uh, the sculpting is a little bit rough in a few places on this figure, so you have to be careful and precise just to make sure that you kind of define those areas correctly. And then later, when you go back in and highlight, that gets a lot easier to deal with. I'm now taking a layer of just pure neutral gray and using that to apply some sort of bright highlights to the armor plating. Uh, I've also kind of continued to use the black glaze all along. I use it on the armor plating too just to help kind of make sure that it transitions into the deep shadows like behind and under his legs and at the backs of his arms and stuff. And it, it, because the black glaze is so thin, uh, it will work just fine with these lighter gray shades. And actually, you can control it. If you're applying a glaze and you find it's making um, everything too dark too quickly or you think the effect is too extreme, it just means that you need to add more glaze medium to it because it's just too strong and too heavy. And you should just thin it down until you kind of get the effect that you want. And the opposite applies too, of course. If you think it's so thin that it's, it's just taking forever, you can always just add a bit more paint in. So it's very adjustable in that way. I've now taken the neutral gray and mixed some white into it to get a very pale gray color and I'm using that as a edge highlight on his armor plating. Uh, it's, it's, and it's not just that I want an edge highlight, if you look very closely at the armor you can actually see there's sort of a thin molded border on a lot of the pieces and it really looks very well to paint that. Um, it is a little bit tricky because the sculpting quality sort of varies, so there's some areas where I think there should be that sort of molded edge and it just doesn't come through in the sculpt, so you kind of just have to make it up a little bit. So, But this really light gray color, I'm really not using it to highlight very, at all, I'm just using this to kind of emphasize really sharp edges on the armor and really make them pop out. Because this is such fine work, you're going to want a smaller brush to do it. I'm using my number zero here as opposed to my number one which I actually used on most of this model but when you're doing such fine detail work it just it's just gonna make your life a lot easier and you want to make sure of course that your paint is nice and thin here because you have to you know apply some very fine delicate lines
Now, basically, the only area on this Batman model that is not black is his utility belt, which, of course, famously is yellow. So I'm going to base coat this using uh, khaki gray from Vallejo, which, despite its name, is actually kind of a nice dark yellow color. Uh, I applied a couple layers here just to make sure, you know, it, there wasn't too much of the black undercoat showing through. I highlighted the belt using first um, a bit of Citadel Averlin Sunset, which I mixed into my khaki gray, and then I just sort of built up layers from there. So I then graduated up to pure Averlin Sunset, and then I mixed in a little bit of white to get kind of a pale yellow and use that as sort of an edge highlight sort of along the top, as you can see, to really sort of make it look like some light is hitting and really kind of, kind of really emphasize that sort of difference between light and dark. And again, I'm working with a number zero brush here because this is very fine detail on this belt and it's just a lot easier to control. I actually then finished with one final layer of almost pure white, which is slightly yellow, which I used just to really put sort of an extreme sort of emphasis along the top edge. Now I'm going to do a little bit on the groundwork that is included in this model. I'm base coating the brick area that he's standing on here using that kind of mixture of white and neutral gray that I already had, so very, very light. This is a little bit like trying to approximate the mortar that would be between the bricks, and I'm gonna go over it again later. Now the sort of the cornice or the crown, I'm also gonna be painting now, this time with a mixture of neutral gray and um, German gray, it's still sort of a light shade, so that's going to kind of be the base coat on those areas. I then went ahead and picked out the individual bricks very carefully here using Vallejo Saddle Brown. Uh, and it takes a couple of coats kind of to get enough intensity, I found, over that white gray base. While that was drying, I went ahead and highlighted the sort of stone cornice, and I used that same white neutral gray color that I just used for the mortar as the highlight on those areas. So I sort of applied it very thinly to sort of emphasize um, all of the sort of areas where the molding was sticking out, and I kind of kind of blended it a lot, especially on the top surface. So I applied a thin layer and then kind of added additional layers to add some intensity near the edges, especially. I went ahead and used a very pale uh, mixture of white and neutral gray to add even further highlights to the uh, cornices, especially sort of on the corners and on the edges, you know, so just this extra uh, really intense um, edge highlight. I'm Because this is the groundwork, I'm not going to get really, really concerned with super good blending or anything like that. And my, it's my feeling that with stuff like this, you know, you want a good sort of effect, but it can be a little rough and a little abstract in most cases, and that'll look absolutely fine. I then took a wash of Reichlin Flesh Shade and applied that all over the bricks to just kind of help tie them together and darken them and unify them a bit more. I then mixed some white into my saddle brown and I used that to carefully highlight along the top and sort of one side edge of each of the bricks. You can even do this in a couple stages for different sides of the wall. Okay, so here's our finished 35 millimeter Batman figure. As you can see, I went ahead and finished up the groundwork just so everything looks neat and tidy. Um, I hope this figure gave you some idea how you can approach painting a larger scale figure. As you can really see, as soon as you go up in scale, even a little bit, the detail really, really, really shoots up. So while a lot of people think that painting smaller figures is more difficult, I think it's really the opposite. A bigger a figure is, the more difficult it is to paint well, and the more time it's really gonna take you to get 
uh, a nice result. And just because this is a figure with a very limited palette, e.g. all black and gray, that doesn't necessarily mean it's easier either because you really have to spend a lot more time and, and effort into getting a nice, smooth look and everything like that. And I found that the black glaze is a great way to achieve a smoother blend when you have these sort of really high contrast areas that you want to unify. It does work really well and especially when you have a bigger figure like this and it's really a necessary thing that you have to do that, it's a really a great help. And a model like this ultimately will always just reward the amount of time you put into it. I only worked on this for a half a day or so, maybe a little bit more. And had I had more time to work on it, had you know I put several uh, several days or weeks of painting time into this, I could have achieved an even better result or a much better result, in fact. But you know that's what it comes down to these bigger scale figures to get really great results. It's just ultimately a question of time and patience. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, share it, leave me comments with what you thought, of course, and do subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. So that's all for now, and I will see you next time.